Hello everyone, and welcome back to our Get Started Fast with Avid Media Composer for High res Workflows tutorial series. My name is Kevin P. McAuliffe, and in this lesson, lesson two in our look at our high res Workflows, we're going to talk about getting footage into Avid Media Composer, more specifically on linking to your larger than HD material. And of course, we do need to talk about transcoding your footage to work with inside of your timeline. Okay, let's keep our introduction short and let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that not all larger than HD formats are supported natively when you install Avid Media Composer. Some of them do require extra plugins. So where do you find these plugins? What I'm going to do is simply command and tab into Google Chrome, obviously alt and tab for my Windows friends out there. And I want to direct your attention to the AMA, the Avid Media Access portion of the Avid website. Here's where you can download common plugins for common formats such as Arri Alexa larger than HD and even of course red that you can see located right down here at the bottom of the window. What you're going to do is simply download these plugins and install them and then when you link to that footage inside of Media Composer your footage will come up right away and what's important to keep in mind especially with red and this is why I wanted to show red footage in this lesson there's a lot of great things going on under the hood of the actual clip that you're definitely going to want to get in and access because it's just gonna help your workflow inside of Avid Media Composer. Okay, now once you have the red plugins downloaded and installed, what you're gonna wanna do is launch Media Composer, and now we're ready to get in and talk about how we're gonna get in and transcode and work with this footage in our project. Let's get our red footage into our project we now no longer refer to AMA linking to as AMA linking to, it is now commonly referred to as simply just linking to. Now, because of that, if you're looking for the AMA settings, you're not gonna find them anymore at the top of the settings window up here under AMA, you're gonna find it down here under link right there, okay? So all I'm gonna do is simply right click in my bin, I'm gonna say link to media, you'll see that I'm already in the red footage folder on my hard drive and I'm just gonna select, why don't we just select the first four clips here? There we go. And I'm simply gonna say open. You'll see in a matter of two seconds, we have the footage in our project ready to work with. Now this first clip that I brought in looks very stretched. So we know something is going on here. So how do we get in and make adjustments to this footage? Because one thing that's important to keep in mind, specifically with red footage, is that there's a whole lot going on that we can actually adjust things like exposure, lift gamma gain, things like that, that's going on in the actual red clip itself. Now we do have access to some of that metadata inside a Media Composer, but of course, again, the question is how do we find it? Well, it's actually very simple. We're gonna use source settings. Now source settings is gonna kind of be your go-to location to do a lot of under the hood work for clips in larger than HD projects. So how do we access that? Very simple. I'm gonna navigate over to any one of these clips and I may as well just choose the first one since we happen to be here. And I'm gonna right click and I'm simply gonna come down to source settings. Once I select the source settings, I'm gonna be brought to the source settings window and we actually have four tabs that we're gonna to wanna to deal with. Now in this tutorial, we're really gonna deal with two of them. I'm gonna deal with our linked plugin window and I'm gonna deal with FrameFlex, okay? So let's come to the linked plugin tab first. Now this is a tab that you're not gonna find across all of AMA link to media inside of Media Composer, just specific ones like red. As soon as I select it, you're gonna notice now that I can actually get in and adjust a whole ton of different parameters, things like I mentioned, like exposure, just like this by simply grabbing and dragging. Now, obviously that was way too much, but you get the idea. I can bring the brightness down, I can bring the contrast up, I can bring the saturation way up. So this is really handy to be able to get in and do this before you actually transcode your media because something that's important to keep in mind is that as soon as you transcode a clip, anything that you've done inside of this window, specifically the linked plugin window, is gonna be baked into that clip. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna cancel out of this because I don't wanna actually have all that sort of uh, crazy modifications that I made to that clip here. But again, I'm simply gonna right click, come to source settings, and like I said, we could get in and adjust any one of these parameters right here, simply say apply, and that will be applied to this clip inside a Media Composer. And of course, we can have that trickle down to any time this footage was used in our timeline. <laughs> 
So the next window that I want to talk about is the frame flex window. Now you might wonder why I'm skipping over the color encoding window. We're actually going to come to color encoding in the next lesson, in lesson three. So let's come to frame flex because there is something that I want to talk about. What I should probably do first is just cancel out of this because I'm going to come back to the format tab and you'll remember that I talked about the project being 4096 by 1716 at a 239 aspect ratio. Well, inside of my bin, I actually have a bin view called appropriately enough link to. And you're going to notice that if I bring that footage bin up here a little bit, you'll notice that my footage is at 4096 by 2304. So a very different aspect ratio. So I'm going to want to set this up inside of my source settings so that this clip doesn't look so stretched. Now you're actually going to see that all of my clips have the same raster dimension. They have a different frame rate, but, a, but the same raster dimension. So what we're going to want to do to one we're going to want to do to all of them. So all I'm going to do is simply come back into source settings, right click source settings. Let's come to frame flex right here and you'll see that frame flex already knows all of the information about my clip. Now the most important thing to keep in mind is that for frame flex, you'll remember that we're dealing with a 239 aspect ratio, not a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. That is why my footage has been stretched out the way that it's been stretched out. All I'm going to do is simply switch that to B. Let's come down to custom. We're going to set this up to be 2.39 to 1. I'm simply going to say OK. You'll notice now that the window's changed and my footage no longer looks stretched. We can adjust the frame flex window now to bring it down a little bit so that we can actually see our you know, man on the bike right into the shot. I can now simply say apply and as soon as I do watch what happens to the clip up here in the preview window, it's going to immediately adjust. I can now say OK and this footage now actually looks the way that it should. Now the great thing is, is that at any time in my timeline, I can get in and adjust the frame however I might need to, to show whatever part of the frame that needs to be shown, so you're not limited to what you see here. Okay, so we've got in, we've made the adjustments that we want. So how do we get in and actually transcode this footage now? Let me show you how simple this is. Okay, now much like many of the tasks inside of Avid Media Composer, there's many ways that we can get to the Consolidate and Transcode window. The easiest way is of course to simply navigate over to the clip, right click on it, and come down to Consolidate Transcode. Or you can always access it from the clip dropdown and simply navigate down to Consolidate and Transcode. Now, by default, everything is set to Consolidate, so what we're going to do in this case is we're going to transcode the footage. Now, as soon as I do that, you're going to notice the window changes. Now that's okay, we're going to talk about all of this in just a second. So let's first of all select the drive that we want to transcode to. I'm simply going to select my G Speed Studio RAID. Now the next thing that we might want to do, depending on how many clips that we have selected in our bin, we might have clips that have been AMA linked to, or pardon me, just linked to, and clips that have already been transcoded in our bin. And if we select everything, we could tell Media Composer, well hang on a second, don't retranscode the clips that we've already transcoded. Just get in and transcode only those that have been linked to. Now the next option that we have is the raster dimension. Now the raster dimension basically refers to in our project right over here, we have the ability to get in and set up a proxy timeline. Now we're going to talk more about the proxy timeline in part three of this tutorial series, but I want to show you that you have the ability to get in and actually transcode at the source dimensions, at a quarter quality, or even sixteenth quality. Now why would you want to do that? Well depending on the system setups you have and of course the drives that you have set up and of course the connection speed between your system and the drives, maybe your system is not set up to play back full resolution 4K you know, on your system. Maybe you have an older iMac or you have an older Mac Pro and you know it's just not up to where it should be to play that footage back at full resolution. Well fear not, you can still get in and work in 4K no problem inside a Media Composer by simply getting in and adjusting a few of these parameters like your raster dimensions. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about how you can actually set this for your playback in the next lesson, but you can also transcode your footage at different resolutions under the raster dimensions drop down. Now the next option is a big one. Do you want to keep the source's frame rate or do you want to convert it to the project's frame rate? Now why was this option put in? This option was put in because in previous versions of Media Composer, what would happen is when all your footage was transcoded, no matter what the frame rate of the clip was, it was always mashed down to match that of the project. Now it doesn't sound like that big of a deal, 
But what happened was in larger than HD projects, when you went to relink to all that media, the high res media, of course the frame rates didn't match and Media Composer didn't end up relinking those clips. Well, now we don't have that issue because in most cases, probably about 99% of the time, you're gonna to wanna to keep that source's frame rate exactly the way that it is. So if you happen to be offline in HD and then you wanna come back and finish everything in, you know, in this case 4K, you can easily relink to all of that larger than HD media because Media Composer will be able to identify it by, of course, one of the parameters, its frame rate. Okay, now the next option we have is to get in and adjust the target resolution. Now, moving into larger than HD projects, we now have a new codec or a new resolution that we can work in called DNxHR. Now you'll notice that with DNxHR, now I am on a Mac, so if you're looking at this on Windows, this will look slightly different. Because I'm looking at it on the Mac, I have eight different resolutions that I can work at, such as DNxHR low bandwidth, standard quality, high quality, and high quality 10-bit, as well as ProRes 422 Proxy, ProRes 422 LT, ProRes 422 MXF, and of course, ProRes 422 High Quality. Now, if you're working on a Windows machine, you're only gonna have access to the first four DNX HR options. So please keep that in mind. In most cases, again, this is really gonna boil down to the speed of your system, and of course, the speed of the drives that are connected to them when choosing your quality. If you happen to be just be doing an offline, you might want to go with a low bandwidth. If you're doing an online, you might want to go with the high quality option. Okay, now you'll see that we can also get in and adjust our link to source scaling from full to half, best quality, good quality, even quarter, eighth, and sixteenth quality. So you'll see many options that we have, again, depending on your system setup. And another big one that we have right down here below that is the apply source transformations. So for example, with the frame flex options that I made, because Media Composer knows that this clip is larger than the 4K setup that we have going on here, do I wanna bake that into the clip so that I have no option to get in and reframe things after the fact? Or do I wanna leave this the way that it is? Now again, what's important to keep in mind is that I did mention that with the red footage, once I transcode, I'm gonna lose that first option, so I'm not gonna be able to get in and readjust any of those red parameters that I have access to inside of the source settings window, so please keep that in mind. Now, one last big thing is that when you're working with larger than HD footage and you're gonna transcode, transcoding in a lot of cases can take some time depending on how much clips you have that you're gonna to wanna to flip over. So the great thing is that you have the ability to not have to sit there and wait for Media Composer to finish, because you can actually transcode everything in the background if you want to. So you can queue up all your clips, set everything up the way that you want, say transcode, Media Composer will start transcoding in the background, and you can keep editing just like nothing has ever happened. Okay, so that wraps up this lesson. In our next lesson, we're gonna talk more specifically about editing in high-res projects. We're gonna talk about the proxy timeline. We're gonna talk a little bit more about frame flex. We're gonna talk about lookup tables, and we're gonna talk about the new color info tool.